So the question now comes, how were we able to identify this object as a meteorite in spite of the fact that it did not have the traditional indicators, the characteristics that would allow it to be considered a meteorite. It did not have regmoglyphs, it did not have fusion crust, it did not have rollover lips or rims, there was no atmospheric melting visible, no flow lines, no atmospheric ablation, and it did not have an iron nickel composition. What we discovered as we examined the meteorite, more as we examined it closely, we discovered that this meteorite had tiny metal particles, iron, iron nickel, that were embedded in it that had struck it at high speed, extremely, like hyper velocities. And so, as we, as we looked at our meteorite in enlarged detail, we could in fact see that there were there were scars, scrapes from impacts at high speed, and these scrapes showed a degree of melt. The surface of this was melting as a result of being struck at such a high speed. And this is a well-documented phenomenon documented by by NASA, their Jet Propulsion Lab, by many researchers around the world who use light gas guns to fire high-speed pellets at various metals. And what they see is when you reach a certain velocity an extreme velocity of uh, six to seven kilometers per second velocity, the type that is rarely seen on the Earth, but is commonly seen in outer space. When you reach these, these velocities, as a projectile impacts a target, it creates melt, melts a surface melts the spots that it's that it's scraping on and we see melt on this side we see melt over here but in the middle we don't see melt rather we see another series of small objects have have impacted the center of this scar and Simple laws of physics tell us that these objects had to be traveling at an extremely high velocity in order to fuse into the surface like they have. In fact, the, high, the velocity that's required for this is only obtainable in a few laboratories around the world using light gas guns, but those light gas guns require that the object that they are firing would be round, it would be tiny, like a BB. Obviously this is not, this looks more like a shotgun blast. It's, it's all irregular sized particles. It doesn't fit the, the, 
methods and the, and the outcome of a light gas gun. In addition, what we see is there's not just one, but there's many of these of these impact sites. And in addition, we see where there are small impact sites, some of which are rounded, some of which are sharp, some of which have embedded projectile material, some of which have hit at such a high velocity that they have, they have vaporized the material, the target is gone, and some of the, and the projectile is gone, as in these cases. But as we looked at this, this find in more detail than, than just the macro, than, than just looking at the outside as in the way that meteorites are often looked at, we discovered that there's, there aren't dozens of these impact strikes, but instead there are thousands. Thousands of, of locations on the surface of this titanium find where it has been struck at every possible angle uh, low hero horizon angles and some sometimes the projectile came in directly straight down into the into the base material and what we discover is there's just thousands and thousands of them and and they're and the hits are on top of other hits and have landed on top of scrapes and additional hits on top of those. And this object defies any, any method of human construction. There is no, there is no process that mankind has that could begin to produce even one of these tiny, tiny impact zones, let alone produce thousands of them. We see that the impactors, the projectiles that, that hit the target, many of them are made out of an iron and nickel composition. Some of them have more iron less nickel and as a consequence or as a result of that some of them show evidence of rust however some of them are higher concentration or or they have a higher content of nickel and may do not show evidence of rust but there is a, a really easy, a real sort of clear color difference between the iron nickel and between the titanium. Titanium tends to be uh, silvery white look. Iron tends to have more of a uh, grayish look to it. So it's quite easy just visually to see the spot where the embedded iron bits are. But it's also easy to test. We're able to use a magnet connected to a string hanging and allow that magnet to be attracted to the iron bits and particles. The magnet is not attracted to the titanium itself, but it is attracted to every iron bit that is embedded in the surface area of this object.
So this is, we're going to close this episode and we're going to continue on discussing the unique characteristics of this titanium meteorite and how we know that it is a meteorite.